divine spirit of love, source of all that is. We ask to be ignited in this space this morning. We ask that your presence fill this space. We ask to be open and receptive to the words that need to be shared for our highest evolution this morning. We thank you, God, Spirit, Source. We thank you. Amen. Hmm. It's always such a wonderful blessing to speak to amazing, already enlightened people such as yourselves. So I am very grateful. Hmm. As I was preparing for this talk this morning, very clear words came into my mind. So I will begin the talk with those very clear words that already came in, which is, the universe wants you to evolve. And being stuck is an illusion. So let me repeat that. The universe wants you to evolve and being stuck is an illusion. We have in our lives a lot of illusions that we run around with in our heads all the time. We tell ourselves these stories, stories from the past. Maybe we've experienced failure in our lives or things we perceive as failure. And so we have these stories that can cycle around and around in our heads and hearts. And I suppose that is part of being human, part of part of this experience. We've all experienced sorrow and heartache. We've all experienced like those mornings where we our alarm goes off and we think, "Ugh." <laughs> I have so many things I have to do today. There's so many things that I need to do and I'm just exhausted and I don't believe in myself and oh, God, you know, another day. Ugh. We've all experienced that at some point. Yet, we've also experienced those days where the alarm goes off and the first thought in our mind is how magical it is to be alive how perfect it is to have another day here on earth. So we have these extremes. We have these moments of bliss and perfection and joy. And then we also have these moments of sorrow. And sometimes in life, we get into these sort of uh, continuing funks, <laughs> where we're not exactly feeling sorrow, but we're not exactly feeling bliss. We've reached a kind of plateau, a kind of stable point that maybe lasts a few days or a few weeks or even a few years. And this is a comfort zone. And maybe if we look back into the past, we see that this comfort zone is not, you know, we can look back and think, wow, I used to be much more sad, or I used to be much more self-doubtful, or I used to be much more cranky or complainy. So if we compare it to the past and our general trend of the past, we can say, wow, I'm doing much better. But on the other hand, we have this feeling deep within us that there's more that there's some other level of consciousness and evolution that we can achieve. We just know it. We can feel it. So it's kind of like a little itch 
and we want to scratch, but we don't even know where the itch is on our body, and we're just confused. So, a comfort zone. I, of course, had to look up, um, uh, sorry, the, uh, the words in the dictionary um, from the talk title today, Transcending Your Comfort Zone. And the word transcend, uh, it has a couple different meanings. The most popular meaning is to go beyond. But a little known definition uh, or less uh, frequently used definition of, of the word transcend is to be independent of. Which got me thinking about what does it mean to be independent of something? Well, to me, to be independent of something means to be free of it, to be free, <clears throat> to be self-sufficient of something or someone or some situation. So to transcend a comfort zone means to be free of that plateau or that space that we've felt stuck at for a period of time. But as I said in the beginning, being stuck is an illusion. It is a very believable illusion, and I'm not in any way trying to demean you for having this belief. We all, from time to time, get stuck in these illusions. But being stuck is an illusion. <laughs> so we all have it. How do we move beyond it? A comfort zone can be transcended. So I'd like to do a, a little check-in with ourselves to help us see, and maybe you're already knowing what I'm talking about and you already can sense what your comfort zone is and you've already got it in your mind. You're thinking, oh man, I really, really want to move past that. I really want to transcend that. Or maybe you're still... Just focus on what I'm saying. You're not quite sure what it could be for you. So I invite you to, again, close your eyes. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to list a number of areas of life, a number of potential specific situations. And I'll leave a little silence in between each one. And if I say a word or a phrase, and you get this feeling inside of, ooh, maybe it'll be a little stinging sensation, or it could be even a feeling of excitement, like, ooh, I know I could do that, or I could work on that, mm, yeah. So look inside for that feeling, that little spark of spirit that's telling you what you need to work on. So what is your comfort zone? Why did you show up here this morning, October 22, lucky 22, to hear this talk? What drew you here this morning? And what are you ready to change? What are you ready to move beyond, to become independent of? Is this comfort zone in the form of a relationship that no longer serves you? Is this comfort zone about a relationship, but more about how you react or how you act within that relationship. So you want to keep it, but you need to shift how you're relating to that person or people. Improve it, evolve it. Is your area of comfort zone relating to spiritual practices? Do you have a spiritual practice, but you know it's time to increase the amount of time you spend each day doing it? 
Do you have a spiritual practice, but you want to add another spiritual practice in your day? Is the area of comfort zone about your level of commitment to your own awakening process? Are you needing to find a new guide, a new counselor, a new therapist, a new intuitive coach, a new spiritual teacher? Are you seeking another level of wisdom that you just need someone's help to get to and you need someone new in your life? Is your comfort zone about something as basic as your food habits? Is there some kind of food or something you're taking into your body that you've just had this itching feeling that is no longer serving you. Maybe it did in the past in some way, on an emotional level. Maybe you used a certain substance to relax sometimes. But you just get a sense that you're, you're ready to transcend that. Is your comfort zone about limiting self-talk or limiting beliefs? Are you comfortable with repeating a certain story about yourself? Do you tell this story a lot when you meet people? Do you use it as an excuse for why you're not happier or why you can't accomplish this or that? Is your comfort zone regarding your career or your job are you doing work that really doesn't excite you, but you have a decent paycheck, so you stick with it? Is your comfort zone about an artistic expression? Do you have the urge to move into a new phase of creativity? Or is your comfort zone something else entirely? What is your heart whispering and it need not be a huge thing. It could be something very, very small. Could be as, as something as small as I no longer want to eat potato chips every day. It could be something as small as when my boss complains at work about my whatever, I will hold loving thoughts towards him or her. Or it could be something huge, some life-changing decision that affects every area of your life. I really encourage you to pick one thing right now and hold it in your mind so that when you walk out of these doors today, you will be guided and protected and supported in this energy that we're creating here together to be able to fully accomplish that transcending, that moving beyond of this comfort zone. Now to seal the deal, take a few deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Bring in that good cleansing prana. You can open your eyes when you're ready. Hmm. So now that you have this comfort zone area identified, how do we then transcend the comfort zone? The comfort zone is there for a reason. It served us well. It was a good thing for a while. It was fine. So how do we move beyond it? How do we transcend? The art of transcendence has two parts, I believe. Two parts, and I think that they are equally as important to the process of transcending. You can't do one without the other. And lots of people try. <laughs> they try to, to 
to do one but kind of ignored the other. Or maybe they're unaware that there's both these aspects. The first most important point, part, aspect of transcending the comfort zone is to ask the divine for help. So whether you call that God, spirit, consciousness, love, whatever term, you take some time, some quiet time alone, and you send up that prayer, you send up that intention, and you just say, I need help. I need help. Some of the most amazing people that I know in my life, they don't, they don't really do this part. Um, they have a bit of pride, so they think they can do it all themselves. And to be honest, these are people that I see really struggle with staying comfortable in certain habits or certain things that they know that they don't want to do anymore, but they just keep doing it year after year after year, even though they know better. They know better. They have too much pride. Too much ego is still in the way, and they can't seem to find it within themselves to just ask for help. So when we ask the divine for help, the divine rearranges every aspect of life to make this thing happen. It's, it's a magical thing. It's really magical. So the divine brings us people that we need in our lives. It brings us the right resources, the right inspirational ideas, the right everything. It brings it. It's like a funnel. It funnels to us. I'll tell you a personal story. I, uh, about a year ago, I realized I had reached this plateau in my spiritual journey. I had had amazing teachers and mentors in Reiki and healing arts, and but I had gotten to this point where I felt like there was so much more, but I couldn't reach the more. And I didn't actually even know what the more was, to be honest. I just like had this feeling of, ah, there's more. So I spent a couple weeks in prayer and meditation about it. And I asked the universe to send me a teacher, a new teacher, someone who was at a different, higher, not in a judgmental way, just in a more evolved level of consciousness than my previous teachers, because that's what I needed to evolve more. I knew I couldn't keep trying to do this on my own. And I knew I couldn't keep trying to do this with just the help of the teachers that I had had previously. I love them. I, you know, I will always love them and be grateful to them, but they weren't able to keep me going. So this was a year ago. And I looked into various paths and teachers and nothing was really clicking. And then about a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago, um, <laughs> so funny, I was at a spiritual center and I was thinking that morning, I was thinking, ah, one of the things that I've been trying to manifest is meditating more. I've always known I needed to do more. So I was thinking, I really want to meditate for two hours every day, like seated, silent, still meditation. That's what I need to do. But I just, it's like, I couldn't, it just seemed like such a daunting task. Like, how am I going to do this? So I was at the spiritual center. Me and this woman, we just gravitated towards each other. And in, it seemed like five seconds, we were telling each other our life stories and I said, so tell me about your spiritual practices. And she said, well, I meditate for two hours every day. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, we need to talk. <laughs> and soon, a few minutes after that, she's telling me about her spiritual teacher. This woman who lives on this mountain in California that she sees and does Skype sessions with. Blah. So we get into this very long conversation the very next day, I check out this woman online, and before you know it, I'm her student. So I have this spiritual teacher, and I can tell you that in the past month or so, I've evolved more quickly than I 
pfft, have in years and years and years. And so it did take a year for that to manifest because it was a full year ago that I put out that request to the universe, please send me a teacher, please, please. It took a whole year, but it did happen. So we asked the divine for help to, man, uh, to go past those comfort zones. We asked the divine for help. We acknowledge I can't do this on my own. I need help. And that can be so humbling, but so wonderful as well, because then all the weight is no longer so much on our shoulders and we can just trust, have faith that everything will work out. It sounds so corny sometimes, but it's so, so true. Everything will work out. And so the second part, I said there was two aspects of transcending the comfort zone. One is asking divine for help. The second part, equally, equally as important, is taking action. Using our willpower, sometimes willpower, sometimes it's easy, but sometimes it does require like ugh, effort and willpower, but taking intentional action towards moving out of this comfort zone. So we can't just rely on asking the divine for help. We can't just say, please, God, rescue me, save me. That gets into the, mm, not a place we want to be. <laughs> um, but we do ask for help, and then after we ask for help, then we take steps towards that goal. Now, this is what a majority of our human population, this is the only part they do. Like this is, the, they don't really think about asking the divine for help. They just think, well, if I have willpower and I make it happen, I shall conquer all. The problem with just focusing on the willpower and not the divine is you don't have the divine aiding and assisting you, which makes it much easier. So you need both aspects. When the, the divine rearranges all the molecules in your life, all the, the threads of the fabric of your life to create moving out of the comfort zone, then, man, the divine's got your back. So... The willpower that you do have to execute sometimes is not as hard as maybe it was in the past when you didn't ask the divine for help. I mean, you can all like probably think of a different scenario in your life where you just used 100% willpower. And wasn't that the hardest thing ever? Ugh. I, um, <laughs> I was rereading some old writing that I did about a decade ago now, uh, when I was in Weight Watchers. I lost 40, 50 pounds on Weight Watchers, and oh, I was doing all this writing about how I was using my willpower to lose weight. But what was striking me as I was reading all this old writing was how exhausted I sounded. And I even used the word at one point in this one article, it's a constant war, you know? <laughs> I would never use, I wouldn't have that feeling anymore that something is war. So when we have the divine helping us, and we know we're not doing it all on our own, then yes, it may be challenging. Yes, fears may come up. And they probably will. So don't worry if they do. You may... Walk out that door, get in your car, and then all these fears are going to come up. Like, oh, uh, what about this? And what about that? What about that? Oh, my gosh. That's okay. Have the fear, but don't listen to it. So just watch it. Watch it come into your mind and say, huh, wow. All right. <laughs> that was there. Interesting. Sometimes these fears that we have aren't even our own fears. Sometimes we're just tapping into the collective and picking up all the fears that they've got and it's just somehow coming into us and we think it's our fear when really it's not. It's just what the collective believes. So every time that we step out of a comfort zone, what we are doing essentially is moving ourselves a little bit farther, a little bit farther outside of the range of normal 
human consciousness, at least right now on the planet, how normal is. In the, the future, it will be less of a divergence, I believe. But for now, when you step outside of a comfort zone, you're taking yourself to a higher level of consciousness. No matter whether it's getting a different eating routine, no matter whether it's leaving a relationship that doesn't serve you, no matter, matter whether it's increasing your meditation practice every day or leaving a job that you d- dislike for something that fills you with joy, no matter what that specific thing is, when you do that, you raise your consciousness. And that is a very beautiful thing. So, I know within the depths, depths, depths of my heart that whatever you are choosing today to transcend, to become independent of, that you will do it. And I am very excited and happy for your journey. And it's so important to come to spaces like this as we continue the work on ourselves because we get reinforced from our beautiful friends here. That yes, we can do this together. We're not alone. And the divine's got our back. Cool. Thanks, everyone.